Hello, hello everyone, my name is Laura, this is my channel Laura's Little Library, and welcome to today's video. It is a video that I've seen a lot of people do right now, and they're posting it, and I thought, you know what, that looks like a really cool concept, I think I'll hop on this trend, and I will make my own version, and that is 22 books to read in 2022. <laughs> So first I want to preface this by saying all the books on this list are going to be backlisted books, so none of them will be new releases. If you are interested in seeing any new releases of 2022 that I am excited to read this year, I have already made and posted that video and I'll have it linked up here, somewhere, somewhere, uh, for you to go ahead and check out if you want to. And now let's just get right into the video. I will have this uh, divided up by genre. And so if you are interested in just seeing a certain genre, majority of it is fantasy because I do prefer fantasy and I read a lot of it, but not all of it is. So let's start off with contemporary. So the first contemporary book that I want to read this year is Dial A for Aunties by Jesse Q. Sutanto. And this is a hilarious contemporary. And there is a sequel to this book coming out next year, which is partially why it's on this list, but also because the concept just sounds amazing. So it follows this girl who, I don't know if she works as a wedding planner or her family does something for weddings, but then all of a sudden someone kind of turns up dead and is kind of her fault and so I believe she calls some of her aunties to help her cover it up and figure out how to move on. The next book that I have is The People We Need on Vacation by Emily Henry. I read Beach Read last year and I absolutely loved it and I am so excited for Emily Henry's new book this coming year called Book Lovers. So I thought, you know, I need to finish, I need to read this book so I can be up to date on all of Emily Henry's books. It's a friends to lovers, which is not normally my thing. I much prefer enemies to lovers, but I figure I'll give it a chance. Uh, these two friends that used to go on vacation in the summer all the time and then they had a falling out and now they're kind of kind of rekindling I think hopefully we'll see with a vacation so then the next book I want to talk about is, is a Cuban girl's guide to tea and tomorrow this is by Laura Taylor Namey and this is one that caught my eye a year ago maybe two years ago I I saw it and I was like oh that's such an interesting title the cover is really pretty and I don't remember the plot super well, but I believe it is a uh, Cuban girl who goes to England um, and is coming over some grief and then maybe meets a boy. I'm not quite sure, but I know that it really like it intrigued me at the time, so I want to read it and this is going to be the year that I do. What I want to talk about is The Henna Wars by Adiba Jagirdar. And I've read one book by this author before, I believe. Yes. And I really enjoyed it, I really liked the writing, so I'm excited to read The Henna Wars because this follows two female main characters and they have henna businesses and they have to go to go to war. You know, like that, that, not like actual war. But it just sounds so cute and I'm not 100% sure if they do fall in love. Like if it's an enemies to lover, I would love it if it is, but if it's not, I won't hold that against it. So that one definitely has caught my eye and I've been wanting to read it. Next, I would like to move on to historical fiction as I would like to try and make more of an effort to read historical fiction this year. I really want to read The Henna Artist by Alka Joshi and this takes place in 1950s Jaipur, I believe. And it is about this woman who is moving to Jaipur. She is kind of on her own. She doesn't come from the best past. And so she starts being the henna artist for a lot of wealthy women. And she gets to like listen to all their gossip and get in on the drama. And it just sounds like a really interesting book. And it's a historical fiction that is not Western. And so I am really, really excited for that. The last historical fiction I would like to talk about is Next Year in Havana, and this is by Chanel Clayton, and this author actually has two books, it's When We Left Cuba and Next Year in Havana. Both I'm interested to read, but I'm only putting one on the list, just so I'll get there and so that I can leave space for another book. Again, I'm sorry, I don't actually exactly remember what the book is about, but I know it has to do with immigration uh, to and from Cuba. I believe this book 
is a dual perspective of the ancestor immigrating to the United States, but then like the granddaughter or the great granddaughter or something like that um, learns about her family history and possibly goes back to Cuba to kind of rediscover her ancestry and her culture. And that just sounds wonderful and amazing. And again, it's it's a very different historical fiction than what I've been reading, and I'm really excited to try it out. And now we have come to fantasy. So obviously there are a lot of fantasy books, as this is 22 books, and I've only mentioned a few. So we're just gonna go right down this list of fantasy. The first one is Six Crimson Cranes by Elizabeth Lim. I have, let, I have read Elizabeth Lim's duology, Spin the Dawn, and Unravel the Dusk, and I loved them. I love her writing, and I was really excited when this book came out. I was so pumped for it, I was going to read it, and then I just never got to it. So this year is the year, but the thing is, is I really want to buy the uh, British version of the cover because it is really pretty with the pastel colors. So once I get around to doing that, but hopefully it will be this year. Moving on, the next book I would like to talk about is Caraval by Stephanie Garber. This is the first in a trilogy. And I purchased this book maybe two, a year and a half ago, almost two years ago, and I have been wanting to read it. I know a lot of people love it. The preface of it sounds amazing. It's like they go to this big event and then her sister goes missing and it's all fun and games, right? So I really want to get started on this trilogy. Also, Stephanie Garber has come out with another book, Once Upon a Broken Hearts, and I really want to read that. But I'm gonna wait until I read this trilogy first, so I need I need to get started. I need to read the trilogy. So the first one is on this list. Surprisingly, this next one is Cinderella is Dead by Kaylin Bayron. I kept going back and forth on whether or not I actually wanted to read this book. I I've heard a lot of good reviews about it. Like a lot of people liked it, and like the story sounds like the kind of book I would enjoy. Like it's a twist on fairy tales. Uh, where like all the eligible women have to go to the ball and if they aren't matched up they die or something um, Like a like a dystopian kind of fantasy Twisted story and that just sounds right down my alley But for some reason I kept I kept looking at it and being like eh, Nah, probably not. I'm not sure eh, for, Like for some reason it just wasn't like capturing my attention and then recently I saw it again like it was on someone's recommendations or something and I was like Oh my goodness, that sounds amazing! Like, come on, let's go! Pick up the pace here! Like, so, it's gonna be on this list because I'm going to read it. Then we have Spinning Silver by Naomi Novik, and if you have been on my channel for a while, you know that I loved, loved A Deadly Education by this author. It was, like, my favorite book of last year, and the preface of Spinning Silver just sounds like the perfect winter story. It's a Rumpelstiltskin retelling, I believe, and it's been on everybody's winter's recommendation list. And I've been wanting to read more wintry books. Right now, I am currently reading a book that is set in summer, and it is snowing outside, and my soul is just melting. Spinning Silver by Naomi Novik. It's a cold story retelling, and I want to read it. It's one that recently came on my radar, but I'm going to read it this year, hopefully sooner rather than later in these winter months rather than next winter. Beasts of Prey by Ayara Gray is another book that I, I heard a little bit about and then it kind of disappeared for a while, but, I'm, but I never forgot about it. It's a fantasy book, but it's about like a zoo and a zookeeper. And that's all I remember about it, but that was enough to make me be like, I want to read that. And so when it came out and everybody was talking about it, I was like, yeah, I want to read that. And then nobody actually read it. And I'm still sitting here like, I want to read it. <laughs> so I'm putting it on this list so that I remember to read it this year because hopefully by the end of the year, I'll rewatch this video and see if I've actually read all these books and then maybe do a vlog of all the ones I haven't read so I can complete the list or at least do a reaction, whatever. So similarly, like I'm probably gonna do with my five star prediction video, which I will also link somewhere up here, somewhere, uh, to, for you to check out if you're interested. But 
back to the video. I keep getting sidetracked. This next one is Crown of Coral and Pearl and this is by Mara Rutherford and I have my notebook in front of me because I'm not going to remember all this. This is one of the earliest books on my Goodreads TBR. Like I started using Goodreads and it was right when I heard about this book and it's like a mermaid fantasy. And so it's been on my TBR for a long time. So I'm putting it on this list to resurface it and rekindle my want to read it. So hopefully it'll be a nice fantasy to read over the summer. Next up is The Keeper of the Night, and this is by Kaylee Lee Baker. This one came out this past year and a lot of people have been reading it and loving it. Our main character is a cross between an English Reaper and the Japanese version of a Reaper. For some reason, I am blanking on the name of it, but that's also because I am currently reading a Korean mythology book and there are Reapers in it, so I, my brain is doing the wrong thing. But yeah, and she, I think, has been living in London, but then she needs to go to the Japan to like kind of figure some mystical fantasy things out. And it's been getting a lot of good reviews, and I love that concept, so I for sure want to read it this year. Especially because I also want to, like, I'm trying to do a mix of, like, these are really old on my TBR, and these are recent on my TBR. Oh my goodness, this next one is White Smoke by Tiffany D. Jackson. And again, I've heard so many good things about that. It is like, I don't know if it's horror fantasy or just thriller fantasy, but when I heard it was a haunted house story, I just, yep. I am here for it, I want it, the cover is beautiful, I want to read it this spooky season or even before spooky season because I have no patience. Spooky season lasts all year round and then I can talk about it during spooky season having already read it. So it's on this list, it sounds amazing. I just. All, all I remember is that it's a haunted house story and that's all I care about. Moving on we have The Prison Healer and this is by Lynette Noni. And this was a very similar case to, I think, Beasts of Prey, where it was, like, in a book subscription box. And so a bunch of people got it, unboxed it, and then just kind of, it just kind of disappeared, dropped off the radar a little bit. It's The Prison Healer. It sounds pretty interesting. I, I am intrigued. The cover is gorgeous. So I want to give it a chance and read it this year. Moving on, we have Iron Widow, and this is by Siran J. Zhao. I'm so sorry if I said that wrong. Um, and this one, again, I was kind of going back and forth on whether or not I want to read it. It's more of a like a sci-fi fantasy, uh, but it is female empowerment and it sounds like it could be a good book. Like I think everybody is excited for it, but there's something about it that is not clicking with me. So I'm hoping that if I read it, it'll finally click and I'll be able to understand and enjoy it. This next one is another start to a trilogy or a series, because we all know I need to start more series. If you, I'm being sarcastic, and if you don't know, I also have a series that I want to continue and finish in 2022, and that has 29 series that I am currently in the middle of. So if you're curious what those are, again, go watch that video, because it's, it's a lot. But the, the book is The City of Brass, and this is by S.A. Chakraborty, and this is like a desert fantasy, and I believe there's gin in it. I hope there is, because I have been dying for a new gin fantasy. I read one called The Candle and the Flame, and I loved it, and then when I picked up We Hunt the Flame, I thought that was going to be gin, and it wasn't, which, you know, I still loved the book, still a great book. But I am needing, I want more desert fantasy, and I would love some with some gin in it. Now on to a book that I finally actually own, and that is A Pinch of Magic, and this is by Michelle Harrison. This is a middle grade fantasy, and this follows three girls who have to save their home, their island, and they're each given a special magical gift to do so. And it's cute. I had bought it as like a book to read during spooky season just to kind of like lighten things up or if I had extra time I didn't end up getting to it so I would like to get to it this year to continue my need to actually read books that are on my shelf which considering I only own four of the books that I am talking about this this giant year-long TBR is not doing a great job of that let's move on 
Gods and Monsters by Shelby Mahurin. It's the last book in the trilogy. I want to read it. I want to hurry up and finish that trilogy already. I did get the first two books in the trilogy for Christmas and I kind of want to reread them. But whether I reread them or not, Gods and Monsters needs to be on this list because I need to read it this year. I want to get it done and just, you know, get it done and hopefully enjoy it. I'm scared because of what happened in the second book. It was, it was not the greatest book, so I'm a little scared, but I need to just suck it up buttercup and start it, get going, and hopefully finish and love it, hopefully, because I love the first one so much. Now this next one is by an author who I haven't read before. I want to read Blade of Secrets by Trisha Levenseller. The anxiety representation in this book I've heard is really, really good. And I just feel like there is anxiety in characters, but it's not specifically like, this character has anxiety. Here is representation for all of you anxious people in the world who have anxiety. Hello. Of which I am one. So. I, I really want to see it. Plus it follows, so our main character who has the anxiety is a blacksmith and she creates this blade that's way too dangerous and she can't give it to the person who wants it. So like her, her sister, and some guy go on a run. That just sounds amazing. So ever since I heard this book, I knew I need to read it. But if I don't put it on this list, it could end up going on the back burner and I just really want to read it. Almost there. 21. Which is steeped in gold, and this is by Shannon Smart. This is a, I believe it's Jamaican mythology inspired. I believe, I could be wrong. At, there was at one point I thought it was West African, and then uh, I was wrong, so I think it's Jamaican, but it follows two witches. I don't remember if they're sisters or not, and if they are, it's, they don't know it, but just, you know me, mythology magic fantasy i'm there for it i am completely here for it so that one came out hopefully not two years ago oh my goodness i don't think it came out this past year did it come out in 2020 oh i am behind book number 22 the last book that i want to read in 2022 is probably the one i am most scared to read and it's one that i actually own physically and that's The Toll by Neil Schusterman, purely because of its size. I read the first book. I loved it. I read the second book. I loved it. I am scared to start the third book for two reasons. One, like I already said, its size. But two, because then it's going to be over. It's the final book in the trilogy. And if I read it, then the story is done. And I would be very sad. But I also need to know what happens. So I just need to like sit down for a solid week and just work my way through this because it's, it's short in terms of like height, but it's thick. So this is the last book that I just need to read. Like I have owned the entire series. Like I, I think I bought them all together. So there has been no reason for me putting this off. So I need to read it and I need to read it this year to finally move on because I feel like everybody else has moved on. Anyway, so those are all of the books that I want to read in 2022. Thank you all so much for watching if you have come to this point. I post videos every Sunday and Wednesday so make sure you are subscribed and hit the bell so that you're notified when I post. I have bookish social medias linked down below if you want to follow me there. We can be friends, we can talk about books. I can get recommendations from you. You can see more of my book reviews like on my Instagram and TikTok and whatnot. Um, otherwise, give this video a thumbs up. If you liked it, comment down below some of the books that you need to read this year. I am very curious. Do you have a lot of backlisted books? Are you going to focus on new releases? Are you going to focus on reading books on your shelves? I want to know it all. So let's talk down in the comments. But until the next video, I wish you all happy reading.